Hi, everybody. Um, I think it's time uh, to start. Uh, welcome. My name is uh, Michelle Wichman, and uh, I would like to give you a warm welcome to uh, the online uh, launch of the Hubble Bubble. Um, thank you all for joining this uh, Zoom session. And uh, we're very excited to share the first impressions uh, uh, of this new light uh, with you. We're all here today because uh, we're celebrating the launch with a Q&A session uh, together with uh, uh, Gabriele Chiave, um, Creative Director at the Marshall Wonder Studio, and uh, Christy White, um, Art Direction uh, at Moy. Um, but before we start, I would like to go through some uh, simple announcements. Um, this Q&A will take about 20 minutes. After that, there is uh, room for all your questions. Uh, if you have questions, please share them in the uh, Q&A chat below. Uh, and we'll pick your questions from, uh, from there. We have a complete sales pack available with um, high resolution images, um, animations, price lists, etc. And uh, we will also share this link uh, in the chat so you can download them. If you cannot download it, uh, please send me an email or if you have other questions, my email and phone number will also be shared in the chat. So I think now uh, it's time to start and to introduce our guests. First, uh, welcome, Christy. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, today, uh, we'd like to uh, zoom into the home of Gab. You see him there. And I want to thank you for opening your home to us and to spend time with us to introduce our new product today, the Hubble Bubble. And um, if you wouldn't mind, could you give us a bit of an introduction about yourself and your role and your history with uh, Marcel Wonder Studio? Absolutely. Thank you, Christy. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Very proud to be today here to launch the, the new lamp with Design for Moy and, of course, to welcome you to the, my house. Uh, it's a privilege to do so. Uh, I'm Gabriele Chiave. Um, I'm Italian originally. I'm the creative director at Marcel Wander Studio since 13 years now. Uh, together with Marcel, we work uh, very closely to follow all the creative processes and projects in the studio, from interior design to product design um, to art direction, and therefore also for Moi. Um, I'm, I'm, I've been studying design in Italy for, for many years, and now it's 13 years I joined the studio. So I'm very happy today to be able to, to discuss with you and explain you a little bit of our, of our process and project. Nice, thanks. Um, I think we've known each other and worked together about 10 years now. And when I first met you, I was really struck by your passion for product design. Oh, hello, there's a little cat. Sorry, there is a little guest that wants to be part of the call. I don't know. Okay. He's just what, going what, around, sorry for that. What's his name, her name? Oliver, Oliver, oh. it's just a beautiful little curious yes. cat that wants to say hello and now it has to leave. We have bubbles and cats today, that's cute. Sorry for um, that. <laughs> that's okay. Um, I just was wondering uh, if you want to tell our audience today um, a little bit about, um, did you always know you wanted to be a designer? What brought you to, uh, to the position where you are today? So, uh, make it in short, in a nutshell, I'm, I'm Italian, but I've been traveling and growing up abroad um, all my life because my parents were diplomats. So I grew up in, in Africa, South America, and a whole bunch of places. And of course, that gave me the opportunity and the chance to grow with a really open mind to, to discover culture, to breathe in really what is, is deeply the culture of the, so, so, many, so many societies and countries. So that was very special. Further to that, my parents always collected uh, antiques. So my mom collected like antique furniture, my father, uh, antique objects. And therefore, moving around, the house was always changing, but not the project. So I was really connected to the products and the pieces and the furniture because that was the the thing that would follow us within our own movements. And of course, my mother and parents always teach me a bit where, where such furniture came and why this was done and what style was that for this, this specific piece. So that was the first, first kind of 
of strength and then of, 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 of link to design. And uh, after that, after, after, before starting design, I was, it was a fun little story. I was very passionate about history because of those pieces, but also archaeology. So then I went, before studying design, I went for six months in, in Syria, in the, sorry. <laughs> in the Syria, I've been in Syria, in, the, in Kurdistan, in the desert, uh, to, to work with the archaeological expedition. And for six months, we were in the desert digging out, really, uh, streets of really different cultures until 2000, 2500 before Christ. And at that point, I really worked for six months, taking out amazing vases, amazing pieces of, of, of this past, of these cultures and these societies, and restoring them. And therefore, I really started realizing how beautiful it is to have something in your hands that speaks about an antique culture, and it's so beautifully made, and it's so, it speaks from the past today to us, to understand our, our past, to understand our heritage. And it was something really that struck me a lot, together with, the, with this furniture story my family. Of course, then I, I understood that basically that was a bit of a dead end in a way because archaeology is beautiful, but it's a bit the past and doesn't speak to the future. So I thought it would be amazing to create today also the next archaeological pieces that in the future will speak about us, will speak about the beautiful things we do. And, uh, and so therefore I, I connected dots. And then I studied in Milano, the Italian type of industrial design, and then coming to the Netherlands, uh, I discovered in the last 13 years an amazing world, an amazing way of doing design, which is complementary to what we see maybe in Italy. Nice. So it sounds like a very linear path of uh, the archaeology and then product design, and then you land yourself at Marcel Wonders Studio, uh, which I'm sure everybody knows. Um, Marcel has a deep respect for the past and heritage. And um, could you tell us a little bit about the, the philosophy of Marcel Wonders Studio and, and how, um, we approach proje how you approach projects there, uh, the vision of the studio and how... And, and, and how well, how the, the process is a bit chaotic, as you guys are more knows, but besides that, I think we, we I, I, I really, from my Italian past uh, experiences, where uh, design was driven by, of course, Italian background of functionality and mass production and industry and so on, which is great. But in the studio, Marcel's always been uh, driving, his vision was always dri driven by, um, by a very humanistic approach. And humanistic in the way of serving people and then giving people, responding to their needs, but to their, to their dreams, to their passions, to, their, you know, to, to serve that area, which is not just functional, so it's not the brain, but it's the area which is more emotional, which is the heart. So we are humanistic in the way that we really want to create objects that people get so much in love that they will keep forever. And that's for us the humanistic approach to really touch the hearts and souls of people. Uh, another really important aspect, which a bit connects to, to the past I was speaking about, and cultures, because we love culture, but we also celebrate the past in the, in the we celebrate heritage, we celebrate craftsmanship, we celebrate what has been done before us. Because it's essential, you can't create the future without embracing the past. You can't ignore what other people have done in order to innovate and create the future. So what we do in the studio, whether we do an interior design or product design, we really try to look at the past because the past is a huge coffer, it's a huge, it's a huge treasure of of stories, of symbols, of beauty, of craftsmanship, of artists that, that cannot be lost. Tradition is very important to us. Therefore, we look at that to bring it today to make the future. There's something very, very much uh, near to our heart and very present in each project that you can see from our studio. So those kind of two are pretty important aspects that I would like to underline today. Nice. Um, I think that um, if I think about the, the values of the studio, I hope that we could say today that we're launching a very humanistic project behind you, something that we hope will touch the hearts and souls, which is the Hubble Bubble Lamp. And I think so, uh, you're going to reveal this to us somehow. I will do a little magic trick. So it's something that I like to be a little magician. So we are magicians sometimes when we design also. But not. Very pleasing. 
I'm just gonna slowly appear in the scene. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's a bit of a magic, right? It's just yeah. attracting the. It appears. Please, here, here you see our new creation, the Hubble bubble lamp. Uh, there are three lamps here today. As you can see, it's a beautiful combination of uh, spheres of three sizes that comes together with a ring that holds them. And in this case, you have two small ones and a medium one, and they're just floating in the space uh, very freely, very organically. So and it's, makes... it's two, two, two of the small size and one of the large. I will just now get the, the camera and make you a little special virtual tour so you can really see them properly. I guess it's nice that you, that you can see them in a different position. So as you see, this is the small circle and of course is so can way. you describe a bit, um, is it a, is it to describe the frame and what we're seeing maybe, the glass? So as you see, there are three rings, two small ones and the middle one, which is larger, which combines and unites together the spheres which are placed internally and externally of the ring. And it's a frosted, frosted sphere. So in this space, you can see them, how they are really placely, placed free, freely in the space, which are of course, in this space, it's, 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 it's the perfect, uh, perfect way to, to, to showcase them. If you see them here more in detail. Nice. And the glass, the glass is a frosted finish. I'll explain you a little bit now about, of course, what you see, but also the concept behind it. It's called Hubble Bubble. Of course, it already rings a bell to some of you probably, if not to all of you. So I'll gladly go back here. Yes, please explain to us what on so, earth. So Hubble bubble, of course, <laughs> comes from soap bubbles. And our inspiration, and I was speaking before about humanistic project that touches the soul of people, is really, in this example, is really great because, um, of course, our inspiration were the soap bubbles. Soap bubbles, every one of you and every person when they were kids had, had a connection with, whether you did it or some friends did it, you always had this magical moment when you were a kid and you would see this magic bubble floating there and running away and flying away and then just disappearing. And it was magic. It was something so beautifully happy, uh, you know, uplifting. That is a reference, is a reference that really, as you see Christy on the background, is a cultural reference and is a memory which belongs to all of us. So it's very beautiful. It feels very... Anyone can feel very connected to it because it's something that belongs to each one of uh, each past, the past of each one of us. So Hubble Bubble, and it's it's it's, it's funny because as you see it here, it's really it's really like that cloud of little bubbles that uh, floats away in the space, and these rings are just freezing them in that space and in that moment in time, creating really a magic cloud of magic bubbles. Mm -hmm. And what the, what you just saw here is the version with the frosted sphere, which basically uh, gets really much the light, it's, it's, very, uh, it's very evenly spread. And then there is a special version, which is this one. And this one, as you see, it's the real, real bubble reference because it's a crystal piece with inside another frosted light. And there is a very beautiful iridescent effect on the glass, which really brings the memory even more alive towards those uh, soap bubbles that we all know. And the ring comes uh, in two sizes. Uh, we have three sizes per sphere. So a small one, medium one, a big one. And, mm -hmm. they, and they are mounted on the ring in very different ways. You can mount them all the small one inside, or the big one inside. Of course, we advise to mount them randomly. Few inside the small, few outside big. So, um, so it really comes more into the into the look and feel of this magic cloud of random bubbles. Nice. So the iridescent. Can you show us a little bit more of the iridescent? So that has like the full rainbow effect on the glass. It has, as you see, a full rainbow effect on the glass that really shines through. This, uh, and then you have still the really clear frosted white sphere inside that really spreads the light in a very beautiful, even way. But it's kind of protected around by this beautiful, um, uh, colorful uh, crystal uh, glass, glass sphere. Um, 
I'm sure a lot of our audience would like to know, and um, I think it's great that you're here with us today to maybe go more in depth on the topic of um, the electric sandwich. So this, as you see, the, this lamp is powered by that technology. And I know that you've had a long history at the studio working on electric sandwich developments. Mm -hmm. Could you uh, tell the team a little bit more about that? So as you know, the electric sandwich um, is, uh, is something that started 10, 10, 11 years ago, more or less, uh, in the studio. We were evaluating a project of an external designer and then it had the same technology that we all knew, which is a tube and with a cable inside, which makes a very thick tube. And the, and the project was with a lot of tools. So at the end, he ended up with, I don't know, 20 tools together that didn't, didn't make, make it right. So we were sketching with Marcel on the table, thinking about how to do it. And at a certain point, Marcel said, but why don't we then just take the cables away and then we just use the structure to bring the electricity to our, to our light? Which we were like, okay, great, but how? So we start studying the process. And of course, we started studying really making experiments and trying to coat something and we coat another thing. So with, with, the, with the process of coatings, finally we reached the, the desired result. It took two, three years to make it perfect, mm -hmm. but we succeeded to create this technology, which is extremely special because this technology allows us to speak about poetry with the hidden technology inside, which is the best thing because when you see magical things which are driven by technology, but you don't see the technology, it just makes you feel, it just makes you dream. And that's what we love about this technology because it allows you really to have much more freedom and much more lightness and transparency and beauty to your design. Uh, and therefore, we went on in that, and, and one of the first one is this one you see here. That was the first one, yeah. I also, the, have, I also have one here I can show. The Heraclium. And until today, uh, the lamps were, we use the technology, we use it with a round rod of three millimeters. And today I'm very happy because we introduced this one, the Hubble bubble, is a, is a flat, flat metal string. And the, and the bubbles are just attached to it. So it's a new way to use the technology and it opens up to several new possibilities because then we can think now about sheets and we can think about flat surfaces that just attaching to the surface something it would light up. So it's, a, it's an extremely beautiful, beautiful uh, technology. And I think that we're also just starting to use it also in very different ways. Cool, excited to see new developments and future with the technology. A little magic, uh, magic lamp. Um, I think of course, it sounds like the electric sandwich in a way was very much part of the origin of the project, but could you also um, tell us a bit about the process of development? I remember seeing prototypes around the studio and Marcel and you were challenging the team to make things by hand, to make experiments. Could you uh, tell us a bit more about the process yeah. from start to finish? <clears throat> well, there's, you know, there are sometimes when you design, you can sketch very well something, a chair or a sofa, and then it's basically more or less what you sketch, kind of. Lighting, lamps, and plus with this technology, it, it's very experimental. You need to really put your hands on, do a lot of trials, tests and trials, tests and trials. And mostly with this technology, which is a coating technology, you can coat anything in metal, basically. So first we start with the team and with Marcel going around and just finding pieces like a, maybe a supermarket thing that you could coat and put lamps on it. So it was really beautiful the way to see how much anything in our imaginary could become light and in a very poetic way. So it, it is something, a process that in this case, because it's light and it's this technology, is more, is more, um, uh, is more led by test and trial than other, other designs. Yes. Maybe um, you'd like to also um, talk a little bit about, because I see the lamp hanging in your space at different angles. So yeah. maybe we could talk a bit about how, the, how you can yeah. work with the lamp in an interior space and all the possibilities of uh, the customization of the, the hanging. So I, will sh I will show it to you again. So you see very much, it's all one is this way, one is this way, one is this way. So of course, this is a, is a bit of modern loft space. So I really love the idea to create, again, this cloud of bubbles, which are just frozen by the ring. It's like if this bubble would, they grew in the space and then the, the ring just 
got them in the space frozen. But of course, these projects started to be rings which were vertical. Mm. And then we decided not to put just vertical rings, but also horizontal. And therefore now uh, the possibilities of the placements are pretty much infinite because you can put them straight one on top of the other. You can put them this way. You can put one maybe inside of other. You can create a cluster in a, in a hotel lobby. And mostly I think that it's, it's, the design is so pure and the technology brings us to such pure design where finally it's just a ring which is a ring, it's a circle, very pure geometrical shape, and spheres, very pure geometrical shape. So together, the identity is so pure and magic that it allows this, the, the positionment in several types of places. I could see it very well here, as much in the palace or in a very classical uh, mansion with a fireplace or in the countryside, I think it would fit completely most of spaces. And not just the typology of spaces, but also the volume, because it's beautiful. This lamp has a lot of moi lamps. They own the space. They really, they really just craft their own nature within the space they found around them. So in this case, it's really versatile because it can really uh, speak different languages and still be very much uh, present in a lot of, of, of type of, of, um, of projects. And I think we'll for sure use, uh, use, use this lamp also in our interior project, definitely. Um. I think we have a few minutes left. I would like to encourage all the audience to please put their questions in the chat now, if you have any. I have just one last, last, I just have one last, last point, if you don't mind quickly. I would like also to say that technology at MOI doesn't just uh, start and ends here in the lab, but technology also, and I'm very proud and happy to show you this little, little button. button. So it's a very special piece that MOI developed in order to to protect designers, to protect authorship, to fight the counterfeits uh, pieces, because it's a little button that every product comes with. And it's a little digital genius that uh, is basically helping you to be sure that your Moi piece is an original one, and it's not a counterfeit, which is something very beautiful for designers, for producers, for in general customers that really want to be sure of the authenticity of their products. So, uh, and it's a digital genius because you can easily, uh, once you get the product, of course, it's going to be attached there. But we can easily, when you get the product, uh, just with the Moi application, you just put the thing here, scan it. And once it's scanned, it shows you immediately uh, that it's a Moi piece that is original and has its own uh, number, serial number and description. So you're pretty safe. And thank you, Moi, for protecting designers, for protecting intellectual property. So we do we do our best. But I have to say, Gab, that you should not remove that button. And but of course, we did for the demonstration today. Yeah, otherwise, I would have to have to climb up there, and I think it was a bit. Yeah, we suggest that people when they install their lamp, they tap the button and they register their project the product, and um, and then in the future Absolutely. we will communicate through this tool more and more with the button. Um, I got a question in, and I think um, maybe you could just go through that with us one more time about how the bulb itself connects to the, to the rim and um, the possibility to ch change the position if you want. Do you want me to show you quickly a, a detail also? Maybe it's nice. Sure. I will try to show you a detail of the lamp itself. Um, Basically, the, the, light, the light bulbs are really connected. If you see here, I don't know if you see it. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, that's good. It's really a ring, and then each, each sphere is beautifully, magically attached to it. And of course, the, the, each, the ring has fixed uh, points of the LEDs. So the LEDs are fixed. They are uh, a certain amount inside the circle and outside the circle. And then, uh, the bubbles just grew on the LED, so you can choose to have random. There are three sizes, um, 110, 130, 140, or it's something like that. 120, 130, yeah. Yeah, and then, of course, you can choose to put them randomly, or you can choose to put the bigger ones on the outside, the small outside, because it's very easy to screw them in and out. You can th theoretically, and I'm, the more people will kill me, because <laughs> one comes with this, Oh, yeah. And one version comes with this, 
theoretically, you could also ask to have combined white and uh, you know, that's, I'm not going right, cool. to have to. I've seen installation where there are multiple installed and But for that. instance, I, I, if I would do a hotel with an installation, I would create a bunch of them and for sure I would mix maybe these and these together in different sizes. So it's very, it's very versatile in the way you place it, but also in the way you put the, the, the bubbles. So it's, it's really a magic, uh, magic way to, to create the, a beautiful maybe, light sculpture. Maybe you covered this already, but um, the, the hanging itself, um, how do you change the position of the angle with it's with the, it's hanging from two cables? Well, then... it's, if, if, you, if you put it a vertical, you know, yeah. it just needs the two cable. If you want to put it in all kinds of sizes, then you have three cables and there is a very easy system in the, in the, um, um, sorry, in the um, ballast in the, top of the ceiling. There is three cables coming into this canopy and inside the canopy you have three, three ways, easy ways to move the ring as you like and then fix it. Of course, now these, these boxes are together. It could be that if you put them in an installation where you want to put them more, we have to get the cables in a certain position. Uh, but for now, the, the, the canopy comes with the three holes and it's very easy to regulate. When we did this, it was very easy. One person and another person, we just would paint kind of the space with lights until it was in the right position. Nice. It's really nice in your space because it's sort of hanging above the dining table there, but I don't know if you could show that you see here. the bedroom is up there on the, on the That's how you see it. side. Yeah, nice. How does the light change from uh, using it during the day and then seeing it at night? Well, I must say that I was very happily surprised when we see the first pieces in prototype because uh, it really does a light, which is very, very magical. I don't know how to explain it. It's, at night, of course, when the power of the light, even if you get one small lamp on the top of a table of six, eight people, it does, it does perfectly light for, for the table set. Uh, in this setting here, of course, with the dimming, if you have the three full on, it's a lot of light. I don't need any other lights here in, the, in this space. Uh, however, the dimming also in the mid low side of the lighting it creates like a sort of halo of diffuse warm light, which is really amazing that I, ha that I didn't see so much in, in other lamps. Or maybe because probably each sphere emits a, such a beautiful, uh, uh, let's say, all over light diffuse and it's very warm and then the, all the space becomes very, very cozy and very mm -hmm. warm. And of course I can see from upstairs from the bedroom is always to have, it always has, it's like this bubble was also reminds a bit of a little star a bit of constellation because of this ring and this little light points. Uh, so, so, very beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. We, uh, we took photos actually at your house, so everybody is uh, welcome to use our press approved photos for, uh, of your house. And you have, you have a beautiful, beautiful animation I, I, I still yeah. saw also. So little teaser happy. behind me. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we have time, but um, there's a question, and I don't know if you can do a gap, so let, let me know. Um, I'm fine behind the magic curtain of course and they would like to see if you can remove one of the bubbles can you remove it people are very uh, interested in the connection of uh, the bubble to mm, the i'm not sure if i manage but i'll try i think it's you see, oh yeah this, this is, is this is the inside yeah and so you see the inside is just a screw made out of uh, the glass so yeah. it's very well well done the glass screwed already as it's right I think, uh, I think uh, I missed it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry for asking the question. I would love to do so, but if I then break yeah. it, then we'll have a problem for, for I think it, the I think what you showed us is very clear. There's this kind of a screw functionality on the yeah. glass itself. It, yeah, it is very, and, it's very and, beautifully done. Yeah, and on the frame, I think it's a kind of, um, it's a bit, also has a screw connection with the LED. Yeah. It's um, just then, uh, of course, mm -hmm. Of course, the ring is here and the bulb goes really like this. Therefore, mm -hmm. here you have just a little screw and, and the lead here, exactly here. So you can just screw the bubble there and then it stays really flat, flush to the metal. Nice. Okay, I think, um, I think we've answered people's questions. I think you did a beautiful job of giving us the insights behind the design today and um, so I would like to close the session by 
Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, everybody, for being here, listening. Hope it was inspiring for you. Hope you will enjoy the Hubble Bubble soon. And thank you, Moy, for giving us the space and the window to really speak about our, our work. Very exciting. And everybody, before you leave the chat, don't forget to uh, download the, the sales package here. You can find the link in the chat. And thank every, thanks, everybody, for staying on. It looks like we have a lot of participants still on the chat. So thank you all for coming. And uh, it's been a nice chat. Thanks. Lovely. Thank you, everyone.